Hello everyone and welcome to a another video. So today I'm going to be talking about the worst books I read in 2020. So while this video is going to be talking about the worst books that I read this year, I am going to be doing a video next week that talks about the best books I read this year. So the videos are sort of like evening each other out because I don't want to be too negative. Um, so this video, while it is going to be kind of negative, there is going to be a very positive video coming up next week. So these books are in a list, so I have my less least favorite first, well I count down to my top least favorite book of the year if that makes sense so i also wanted to let you know that i do not have any of these books i think i might have one or two of them but if i do they're at home and they're not on this shelf so i am going to have to import pictures for all of them so i'm just gonna slide over here so there's space but yeah let's just jump right into the list i have six books on this list because i didn't want to be too negative so number six is again but better by christine riccio i think is how you pronounce her name i actually found out while writing the script for this video that this author is actually a famous youtuber um i had no idea of that so i'm not trying to offend her or anybody who enjoys her i haven't watched her videos so i don't know my opinion on her specifically this is just my opinion on this specific book and that's it sorry for the disclaimer but i i'm not trying to throw hate at anybody i just this is how i feel about the book so this story follows a girl named shane who is pre-med in college but she isn't really having fun in college she doesn't really have any friends she's kind of just living the same day over and over again just doing homework and stuff and so she decides to take a semester abroad in London she's going to school for pre-med mostly to appease her parents but she really enjoys writing and so while she's in London she actually gets an internship within that field I can't remember specifically what she does but it's within the field she kind of gets to explore her love of writing more and see if that's really something she wants to do I actually really enjoyed this book at first. I love having college age protagonists and because it's not something you read about a lot and because I am a college age person, um, I find that very relatable. And also there were so many Taylor Swift references in this book and I absolutely appreciated that so much. So yeah, I really enjoyed the first half of the book. However, about halfway through something weird and magical happens and it sort of like takes over the plot for the rest of the book. And I didn't really feel like it fit into this story that we had. This felt like a very contemporary book and for whatever reason this just random thing that's magical happens and the rest of the story is based on that magical thing and like it just felt so out of place given what we had at the beginning of the story. There was nothing at the beginning to foreshadow magic or even that there was magic in this universe. I honestly thought it was a contemporary because I hadn't read the synopsis. I think it does say that there's something magical within the synopsis, but I didn't read it before going into it. So I just don't think that the magic was really set up well before it actually happened. So that I think is why I disliked it the most. It just was very jarring to read about and I don't know, it sort of made me dislike it for the rest of the book. Alright, number five on this list is What If It's Us by Adam Silvera and Becky Albertalli. It pains me to put this on this list because I love both of these authors, but I didn't like this book, like, at all. So this story follows two boys, Arthur and Ben, who have a sort of meet cute at a post office when Ben is mailing a box of his ex-boyfriend stuff back to his ex-boyfriend. And so they have a meet cute there. It's honestly really adorable and I really liked that and the whole LGBTQIA representation within the book, that was done really well. So Arthur and Ben end up going on a date and the things don't really work out as well on the date so then they go on another first date and then they go on another first date and that like you honestly it's a setup for something really good. However I felt that the story was really bland and kind of boring um, for especially for a contemporary which are usually very slice of life and not very amazing if that makes sense and so this one just Honestly, I can barely remember anything about it. I remember that they spoiled me for Hamilton. I believe it was Hamilton. And I'm really mad about it because I haven't seen or read or gone to the play of Hamilton. So I was like really mad about that. But yeah, like I said, the story was really bland. I don't remember much of the plot. The characters weren't very developed. I remember thinking at points, okay, which of these boys is which? Because I, they literally didn't have any personality traits that really stuck out. I couldn't keep them up like... 
I couldn't tell the difference between them and so that was really an issue for me and also the side characters I can tell you a single thing about them and even though it's been a while since I read that I couldn't tell you a single thing about them even right after reading the book like the side characters were they were nothing but yeah like I said I like the representation but everything else just didn't go well with me all right number four on this list is playlist for the dead by Michelle Falkoff so I started reading this book during a readathon I was doing with Lexi. We started out buddy reading it, but we kind of ran out of time for that, so I finished the book on my own. So I like the idea of the story. It's about a boy named Sam who finds his best friend Hayden has killed himself, and the only thing Hayden left behind is this playlist of music. And so now Sam is trying to understand why Hayden killed himself and the events that happened the night that he did that based on mostly on this playlist of music and so each chapter has a song like paired with that chapter which I really liked the idea of and I did listen to those songs while I was reading it I think the biggest thing why I didn't like this book is because it was just boring there wasn't a lot happening in it and like there like there'd be times when you like discover something about what happened that night and it's like oh yay and then it would be like 30 pages of just boring nothing is really happening kind of just like filler pages before you find out something else for the most part i just it didn't really vibe well with me because i was just bored reading it the whole time and i felt like it could have definitely been a hundred pages shorter than it was but however i do appreciate that it tried to tackle the hard subject of suicide number three on this list is frankly in love by david yoon I was very hopeful going into this book. I mean, we love representation within books, but unfortunately I didn't enjoy it as much as I had hoped. So this follows the story of a Korean American boy named Frank Lee who finds himself in an issue with trying to appease his parents and their expectations of who he should date, meaning that they only want him to date a Korean girl. But things are kind of complicated when Frank starts to like a white girl. So he sort of does this like fake dating thing with a Korean girl that he is friends with in order to appease both of their parents. I honestly don't remember much about what happened in this book because it was, frankly, pretty boring. I'm pretty sure there was something about the romance that I didn't vibe with too well, but I honestly don't remember because I read this book back in like March and a lot has happened since then and so my brain is kind of just like threw it out. It's like, you don't like this book anyway, we don't need it. For the most part, I just didn't enjoy this book because it nothing really exciting happened in it and that was just unfortunate. Number two on this list is Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. This is on this list because it is essentially annoying. I uh, I did not like this book at all when I was reading it. I think I, I was reading it on an audiobook, which may have influenced my opinion just a little bit because a lot of these girls had like Texas and Southern accents, like really thick accents. And so the narrator like really overly did these accents to the point where I'm just like, oh, stop. Normally I do like accents and what I appreciate when narrators do people's accents because it's more realistic, but like the narrator was just so intense about it it just like kind of drove me crazy but this story follows a bunch of beauty queen nominees um who end up stranded on an island when their plane crashes and so it's sort of like a lord of the flies retelling in that sense where they have to sort of figure out how to survive on this island even though they know nothing about surviving because they're beauty queen not only were the characters accents annoying in the sense of me listening to the audiobook but the characters themselves were annoying as well because they were stranded on an island and all they cared about was like oh i messed up my nails or i have to keep doing my uh talent for my routine or whatever for when we get off this island and i'm like girl you're not gonna get off this island if you don't figure out how to take care of yourself and make sure you're eating and like survive there was also some sort of plot line about like some sort of heist but i honestly don't remember like what that plot line even was because it i didn't care about it at all this book just overall was a flop for me but lastly the worst book that i read in 2020 was The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So I read this back in like January or February um, for my literature class on campus and so I think that being forced to read it did not help my opinion in any way. But if you didn't know, I hate classics. I hate them so much. They're just like, the writing is just so pretentious 
and the characters are unrelatable and I don't like the time period and blah. I just don't like classics, okay? And especially don't like classics when I'm forced to read them by classes. So, but going into this book, I thought I might detest it a little less than all the other classics I've read because the story itself sounds pretty interesting. It's about this guy named Dorian who has this painting that is a portrait of himself and the day that it's painted, he's like, oh, I wish I could stay this beautiful forever. And so his wish sort of comes true, but we don't really know why it comes true. Like it kind of just happens, just, I don't know. Like there is like a sort of magical element to it, but like we, it's not, it's never explained and it's never really dove into. So over the years, even as Dorian ages, he always looks the same. And even as he does like really mean and bad things, he always stays looking the same. However, his portrait sort of gets grotesque and yucky looking as more and more time and he does more bad things goes on. Because his portrait is changing, it sort of drives him crazy and he continues to do bad things because he's now mentally unstable. I literally, there isn't a single thing that I remember liking about this book at all. Like I said, the plot sounds interesting, but I did not like the way it was executed, so I didn't enjoy it much. And of course, I didn't enjoy writing a paper on it either. <laughs> All right, so that is it for the worst books I read in 2020. I tried to keep this list short so there isn't as much negativity that I'm sending out there into the world, but I did want to talk about the worst books that I've read because it's interesting to see what I read this year and how I enjoyed it. But if you like this video, please make sure to stay tuned for next week when I'll be talking about the best books I read in 2020 and that will be a much happier video. And also make sure you're subscribed down below so you don't miss any future bookish content from me coming in the next year. And if you want to follow me on social media, all my links are in the description box down below as they always are. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!